Compare these two scans. On the left is a healthy infant's brain. On the right is the brain of an infant whose mother was infected with the Zika virus during her first trimester. In April, scientists confirmed the link between the Zika virus and a rare condition called microcephaly. The most visible sign of microcephaly is an abnormally small head. But Zika causes the most devastating harm inside, where it attacks a developing brain. The Zika virus invades brain cells, particularly a very important type of cell called neural progenitors, which form much of the brain's critical gray matter. Once inside these cells, the virus replicates until a cell is overwhelmed and bursts, allowing the virus to spread further into the brain. Not only does the virus keep portions of the brain from developing, it creates scars, called calcifications, that disrupt connections between parts of the brain. Because brain growth is stunted, there's not enough pressure from the tissue within the skull to push the skull outward to form a normal-shaped head. Of course, they will never have a normal brain. They will be children with special needs. Approximately 80% will develop epilepsy and will have to be monitored closely by a specialty doctor. In addition to epilepsy, babies born with Zika-related microcephaly can suffer a wide range of issues, including visual problems, hearing loss, and difficulties in swallowing, sitting, walking and talking, as well as learning disabilities later.